You see where it is? It's hiding. Oh, there's another one that's... Oh, I passed that one up. Right over here. Cool. Pick them up. Oh, there's one between my feet here. Right here. They blend in so well. Just a oh, little yeah, one. Oh, yeah, there's another one. Where? one. No, that's just Are you going to pick that big one? Yeah. There's another one right here. Right here, Cody. There's some false morels we found. These false morels that we found are the closest looking to morels of any of the mushrooms that are considered false morels. This right here is a false morel, and the way you can tell that they're false morels. Real morel versus false morel. Okay, you can see under here, it's connected with this false morel. See under there, it's not connected. There's a false morel versus a real morel. This is the biggest morel we found so far. Oh, Wait, that's a good one. Are we gonna keep this or just throw it out? No, keep it in there. I want to show some people. Look at this one. Ooh, pretty cool. The biggest one that I found that was. All right, let's keep looking. What's the biggest one? So we're home now, and uh, there's two morels. One's a yellow, and one's a black morel. And they look fairly different, but they're both true morels. And down here, one of these four is not like the other. But these are uh, different uh, shades. There's two black morels, although that one's pretty light. And a yellow morel, and then a false morel. And you can already tell right now which one the false morel is. Because you can see that the cap is not connected. But the way you tell that that's not connected. So here, I'll show you. So I've cut these all in half. And you can see, here's a real morel. And the stem is connected to the cap. It's all one piece. And so whenever you cut these in half, you can tell real easily because you can see that the stem is not connected to the cap on these false morel. And I found other types of false morels that are considered false morels, but this one really looks the closest of, to the morel because you see the pattern on the on the cap is really similar to the pattern on the morel. It's not quite as um, big and as deep of the of the grooves and kind of pores in the morel, but but it is similar. And other species, it's more like that that cap is more of a rolled up piece of paper, you know, it's kind of like a crumpled up ball. But anyways, on these big morels, you can really see how that works out. And you can see on all these that the cap is connected to the stem. So morels have a lot of different shapes, but that's uh, that's kind of the foolproof way to tell them apart. My dad taught me to always cut them in half. And at the time, I didn't know why, but then uh, after I've really picked lots of morels and stuff, uh, that whole cutting them in half is for uh, telling that they're really morels. But I can, uh, with all the time I've been in the woods, I can really just identify a false morel from a, mor a true morel uh, any, any time. They're, they're not really that hard to tell apart. Right here, we have a false morel. Few more too. Two right here. There's two right here. And the way you can tell that they're false morels is because the way that they are. Found them, buddy. Here you go. Go ahead, pick it up. That's a big one. Yeah. Told ya. Just gotta know what to look for. Yep, yeah, I saw that one right there. And then, nope, that's actually a real morel. It is? Yep. From, from the distance I looked, it looked like a false morel. There one is. 
Why don't you pick it? Pick it.